we of course saw your uh, Facebook post uh, late last week um, addressing um, some some pushback from uh, you know an announcement that you were going to be uh, enforcing this. And I first I just want to start with saying you know what what compelled you to write such um, a thoughtful open letter to the folks of your county? Well, it started. It was a um, it was a a social media post that um, our PIO had done regarding the stay-at-home order and the fact that we would be enforcing the order and the stay-at-home stay directive. It was a bit of an overreaction from our constituents here in the county um, that prompted me to write that letter. You said on the, in the post on Friday you hadn't yet issued a citation. Is that still the case after the weekend? That, that is still the case. We're still taking an educational approach and when we encounter individuals who are not complying with the order, we simply educate them on the order and ask them to abide by it. And so far, we've had success in doing that and have yet to issue a citation. You know, in your post, you mentioned that some people, despite education efforts by your office, are, you know, quote, completely disregarding uh, the stay-at-home order. And I wonder, you know, what does that look like? What does that mean for you folks? There? Well, so most of this is in response to calls that we get from citizens. And we have gatherings that are happening in parks, people using playgrounds, which is something that we all are used to doing. Um, so we had some gatherings in some parks um, and we simply went out and had to educate some folks and and to this point they've been compliant with those requests. That too there has been the largest impact that we've had is just people calling and um, we've, we have a couple of, um, we have one motocross track here in Yuba County and it, it tends to get a lot of um, attention from people that drive by and see the large number of cars there. So just some things like that where we have uh, large numbers of people gathering prompt, is prompting calls from the public. You mentioned in your open letter that you looking at models and data changed your mind. Uh, you know, from I think a shift that we probably all underwent in the last couple of months from gosh, they'll, they'll hope this is just maybe a bad flu to this is something pretty serious. Can you talk to me about your personal shift and what made you say, you know, we, maybe we have to start taking this a little more seriously. Absolutely. So uh, probably like a lot of people, I thought it was uh, an overreaction. And I, I hope it still is an overreaction, quite frankly. But look, looking at some of the numbers, especially from the coroner standpoint and preparing for the surge or the peak, um, what we're being told based on the models that are presented. And it is just, um, I, I don't want to get into the details of it, but you know, we're taking precautions and preparing ourselves for those surges on the corner side. And it, um, if there's anything that I can do to reduce that number of, of deaths here in our county, I'm going to take every step possible. So I know I didn't answer your question specifically, but I, I don't know that I want to get into those numbers because they are, they're fairly alarming. Sure. So it's, it's fair to say that, that seeing the data and the numbers um, sort of changed your perspective. Absolutely. I think you made a really personal appeal to folks. You said, you know, if you were told that you could save, you know, your, your kid or save someone from cancer or keep someone on the earth another year or two or 10, uh, wouldn't you want to do that, you know, just by staying home? And, um, you know, is that, is that coming from a, a, a personal place, a place in your heart? No, I think I, you know, I grew up in this community and um, it could happen to any of us. We, you know, I have elderly parents and every, uh, there are a lot of people here that do and, and um, you'll never know what impact you had, but if you could stay home and save someone's life, it's a pretty easy ask in my opinion. One of the reasons I wrote that letter was because I had heard, you know, outcry that, that uh, the constitutional rights were being violated. And I, I just, I disagree with that. I think that they're there, there may be some inconveniences posed upon people, but no constitutional rights are being violated. And the last thing that we want to do is, is to, to violate someone's constitutional rights. You can still go outside. You can still enjoy yourself. Just do so. Adhere to the distancing requirements. And if you need to get out and go for a bike ride or go fishing or hunting, you're certainly free to do that. And, and we encourage that.